Hey all, welcome back to this channel, Shedlock 2000's Land Rover Garage and many interesting things. Um, we're back at the garage, and uh, well actually you're back at the garage, but I've never moved. <laughs> um, this is video two of the same uh, same day, but any road, um, you'll be seeing it weeks later probably. Um, we did last week, if you remember rightly, or, or last time, last video, uh, assuming that I placed these in order, which I may not. Uh, last time we, we fiddled about with adaptive suspension, that that um, the electrical plug wire that goes to the adaptive suspension, and I showed you how to replace that and make a permanent soldered joint. Um, and things didn't work as best as I wanted them to, because of course I didn't just have exactly the right sized. Um, shrink wrap but today uh well today i've got a big box look we've got a big box so i'm going to shove that on uh it's an awfully large box for actually not a lot of stuff um and i am going to put in these well actually i'm not because in this box is not the bevin c led headlights but is actually the um the far and headlight kit now this is for your main beam uh and uh they obviously fit in the in the main beam thing i think it's a i'm going to get this wrong but i'm pretty sure this is a h7 bulb replacement um now i have also updated in my range rover i updated my headlight bulbs to an osram night breaker fancy by xenon thing which which is no brighter but yet somehow manages to go 50 percent further and they do i don't know why i don't know that i would say 50 percent, but they certainly go a lot further but one of the best upgrades you can do is to get rid of these halogen headlight main beam bulb things the h7s and replace them with these led chaps um because led is the future um now in this box as i have just mentioned is the far and h7 led light and i'll i'll put this on the bench and i'll open it because if i open it here it'll all fall on the floor and it'll be a tragedy um and this box is for the bevancy h7 conversion kit now i've got the bevancy in my range rover and these far ends were in my range rover before i swapped to the bevancy and i actually think the far end are ever so slightly better the box this bump thing here says that they are 200 percent broader and 250 percent further that seems like an awful big claim and i don't know that i agree with it but i would say that the far end are ever so slightly better i think they have a better beam pattern i think i will try i have oh i might have a photograph of uh, of the farans in action um so i'll throw you that in i don't actually think there's a massive difference between the two to be honest um but but nikki my pal's getting the better deal here because she's getting these farans which i think were a bit a bit more money but i think they were a bit better anyway super duper bevan c shiny chaps from amazon were i don't know how many money farans were a bit more money uh but not not i think maybe like I don't know maybe 50 bucks or something they weren't lot, like not bank breaking amounts of money if you know what I mean but I think the fire ends are better anyway I'm going to throw these in I'm going to stick that on um if I can uh, uh and I don't know whether we're going to get a chance to do this uh because we might be running short of time but Nikki has brought uh she's brought the uh interior light kit off powerful UK shout out to Simon I haven't spoke to you for a while Simon what our old chap um it's been a bit uh I, I did go through a stage when i got that l322 buying all the things from him and we chatted again for a while but i haven't spoke to him for a bit but i did see i did see that simon had just recently released on the talk he says see i know all the lingo i'm hip with the groove um the uh simon i did see that he was reviewing uh, one of those ineos grenadiers or whatever whatever they called he, he got one of those fancy things and he was poking and prodding it so um uh simon does absolutely fantastic stuff uh, on his website provides lots of gear for for all these kinds of vehicles defenders and land rovers and and some other things as well but um he, not only that but he's a top he's a top guy he's a really nice guy so if you've not heard of simon from powerful uk please do consider buying some things from him and as i said nicky's got i think uh the interior up light upgrade kit uh the led upgrade kit for this vehicle and simon sells them as a kit and i will try if i can find it um 
to give you the photograph. I have actually done this on my car, but I don't remember actually showing you how it was done. Uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But anyway, I, we'll, we'll try and do it this time. And uh, if we have time, I'm running out of time, I've got to go to a big fancy party tonight. And got done my kilt. But any road, um, without further ado, let's crack on with headlights. I have to try and figure out a way of squeezing my camera in so you can see what I'm up to. Right, all being well, you won't be able to see what I can do. <laughs> I've got cameras and things everywhere. I hope I've got enough room for be able to stick my hands in here. Um, I'm only going to show you the one uh, because the other side is just well, just like this side, really. But anyway, um, uh, what you can see here, and I'll hold this up for the camera without trying to drop it on the floor, is uh, you've got two bulbs and then these two little um, uh, uh, coolers and uh, this acts as a cooler as well as a, a like a, a circuitry uh, to make this stuff work and you just basically I'll take one out and then you can see what we're dealing with uh, basically this plug uh, he says this plug um, goes plugs into where the the light would have plugged in and then you've kind of got to feed this um, unit into the into the back of the housing and then you've got to put this in as well now it does matter which way this is orientated uh, and this little collar actually spins if you can see what i mean and then locks and it's important that you've got it in the right place or else it'll uh, this orientation has to be appropriate and i'll tell you which way it is when i've read the instruction <laughs> i think is this i i actually think it's this way or perhaps it's that way but anyway um, it's e it's either uh, 12 o'clock you know like 3 to 9 or or uh, 12 to 6 vertical or horizontal anyway I'll figure it all out and this bit here has got a fan in it to help keep these cool because LEDs are quite cool and it sits in a in a sealed unit obviously to keep the water proofed uh, of the headlight unit so when you wade in you don't get water in your headlight unit and and it will all fit in it's a bit it's a bit awkward but it'll all fit in anyway i'll figure out which way it goes and then we'll let you know right so to take this um cap off uh, you can see perhaps maybe you can't uh it says on and off uh, and basically that's all you do you twist twist it off uh, if you can it's only a short turn maybe i don't know five or ten degrees and then it's a bay and it fit and it comes off you can see the seal on the back what i do is i run this towel around the back to get rid of some dirt and then i will also spray a little silicon spray on here uh, just to give the rubber a little bit more uh, rejuvenation to stop it because it gets hot to, uh, so i'll put some rubber sealant on there and just let it soak in for a little bit and then that's that and then in the back you're going to have a plug that you've got to unplug which is this chap oh it's pulled the bulb out as well normally it won't pull the bulb out as well which it has on this case so when you do take the bulb out this is a halogen light bulb uh, and it's very important not to get your dirty paws on the crisp uh, on the glass because the oils from your hand go onto the glass and then when it heats up it explodes and that's a bad day so it's very important not to not to get your hands on it but you do need to unplug it so without getting your oil on the hands uh, oil on the bulb you kind of have to there we go unplug it like that uh, this was just to stop me getting i mean it doesn't matter if you get dust on it but anyway that's the good bulb i'm going to put that um, he says if you couldn't see I'm going to put that in the box so I don't break it and Nicky's got it for a spare and the process with this is a bit complicated they do have to go vertically um, but of course in order to make sure that that works you have to orient this uh, I don't know if you can see this orient this um, pole or this this I don't know toggle or whatever you want to call it into the right plane or else it, it obviously won't fit and that'll involve sticking your fingers in to figure out where the, the bit is on the inside it's at the bottom so that cutout is at six o'clock so if this 
if this is going to be fitting this way vertically this needs to orient with the bottom and to do that you just push this and twist it slightly until it sort of you can did you see it just pop up there and now it's in the right position uh, this wire uh, could either go top or bottom uh, but because of the where the hole is uh, in 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 this light unit it's better if it comes out of the top because there's more space and this is going to be hard to show you we take this wire out of the way so in this hole the actual light goes right at the bottom you would think it would be straight across but it actually isn't it goes quite far down into that hole and uh, and so it's better if the wire comes out of the top also that gives you more space to hide this thing so we put this thing in first I'm just going to give it a bit of a dust because it's been in the box but I'm just going to wipe all the the dust off it before I shove it in the hole as they say and shift that wire out of the way so you can get this oriented into the hole properly it is just a push fit there's a little springy affair in the in the hole itself and uh, once it's in you'll feel it go in and you can look from the front to make sure that you've got it aligned properly there we go so it's just a little spring clip that orients this in it's not quite as good as they used to have that little do you remember they used to have that little spring clip affair that went on the top and you have to look through the front to make sure that it's central in the hole if it isn't central in the hole it's not in right at this point this this uh, ballast is outside of the of the light and obviously it can't stay there but um, it's just easier if you just connect this up while it's outside and then fiddle about with it it will only work with this in one way this is an LED and you can see maybe you can maybe you can't it's got positive and negative on it so it actually will only work if you put it in one way so before you plug it all back together again just try the headlights right so in this orientation with the extended part of the the wiring harness up and the wires going down this plug needs to be the plus side needs to be on the other side which is a bit awkward like that so the writing that says plus and negative on this far and light unit needs to be pointing towards the where the wires come in and we'll just double check again to make sure that we've got light and now you've got to carefully feed this ballast into the hole out of the way and somewhere where there's plenty of space because it gets hot and you don't really want to interfere with the operation of the fan which is actually on the back of that light unit the, 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 the light bulb itself which I showed you but there is a remarkable amount of space in here and you can actually tuck that ballast uh, you can sort of tuck it up and across towards the the headlight and it goes out at road which is very good and very handy uh, and now I'm just going to get a little bit of spray this is overkill and of course you don't have to do it if you don't want to but uh, I just take a little bit of silicon spray spray it onto my cloth because if you don't it goes everywhere and then I just rub that around the rubber seal and what it does is it just puts a little bit of, of silicon onto that seal just to give it a bit of rejuvenation and you can certainly spray it directly onto here but you've got to wipe off the excess and there's a, runs a risk of getting it into the back of this housing here if if you're not careful but just a little bit and the, of course it also cleans up this the back of this uh, cap which would help uh, eliminate dust from the back of that setting but basically that's all I do it just the, the added silicon just gives you a bit of an extra lushness to this to the seal and helps it to resist water and then refitting is exactly the opposite of the removal so you just put it in at the removal position give it a bit of a twist and there you go just double check with your fingers all the way around to see that you've secured it and jobs are good now I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't going to show you how to do this side but having 
just set about it, um, Nicky said to me, oh, you've got to take this water thing off. Uh, the answer is, no, you don't have to. Um, uh, but it's a lot easier to get your hands in if you just... If, there's only one bit of a thing. It's an 8mm uh, nut, and you can just undo the 8mm nut. And then once this is undone, you can just sort of pull it out of the way and shove it in between the uh, the air cleaner box and the powered steering fluid reservoir uh, and then you, you the access is just a lot easier to to get at it and that's basically all all there is to here um you can do it without it but there's a lot more fiddling so i think this is is the best way to go about it same procedure as last time i'm still recording so i won't crack on talking <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as I like the sound of my voice a lot. Same procedure as last time, just cover the bulb when you take it off. Grab your headlight, but new fancy LED headlight bulb, and, and again, uh, just orient that, that bottom pole, uh, this location toggle or whatever you want to call it. Just make sure that it's located right. Um, if you're not careful, uh, this will actually come off altogether if you sort of unscrew it you've got to go around all the way to make sure that this is comes out at the top and this pole remains at the bottom without it coming off as you can see it's not it's not coming off here and Firthy's got dust on this one now I'm obviously using the side that didn't have the silicon on for silicon spray on for obvious reasons and then we can just shove that in foil as usual doesn't take very long to do this it's actually in terms of modifications this is one of the easiest jobs there we are that's better so you do just have to as i say you do just have to stick your head down front to make sure that you're getting this in the right way and remember I can't show you because um, I haven't got the camera but just remember the uh, the plus and minus sign has to go towards the wires in the same orientation when you plug it in or else it'll be back to front and won't work uh, you lose the ballast first before you shove all wires in remember with the ballast you go up and to the outside of the car where there's a sort of a bit of a shelf thing that you can hide it on and get out of the way that's it up and to the outside of the vehicle and then you can hide the rest of the wires in and everything fits all lovely jubbly as, as to quote um par larkin oh that's going back some isn't it and then again just take your silicon spray dampen your best rag and give that seal uh, just a bit of a a tarting up so that it's got some it also stops it sticking and, and makes it work better when you put it on you know it's just a bit adds a bit of slip but uh, it's good for the rubber and it cleans up that finagle this out of here and shove it back on there uh, stick your best eight mil screw in it And the job's jobbed. Look at that. It's the same um, procedure on the left as the right. Bit of shop towel and some cleaning tools, a scrudel burger, and some scrudel burger and some uh, easy clean or some, you know, some some of that nature. Just yank this off because it, well, it's almost it's fallen off and then begin the procedure now if you're a good man I dare say that you'd be able to somehow squeeze that bottom attachment in because you can you can sort of see it straight here but I don't know how you'd do that and stick it down at the same time but 
they might be braver and sent more better folk than me at that kind of affair uh, but as I said the, the one on mine doesn't actually do anything anyway so and this is just as I've said before just to in, there's no mechanical fitment here in terms of uh, you know sticking it down or anything but just to keep it clean this little bit of stuff here clean because if you don't do that the, the debris is going to get in the way of pushing that seal properly into position now whatever it is that's fastened at the top here is more like a uh, instead of being a, a 3m sticker like the bottom one uh, whatever fastens this top piece in is more like a bit of a rubber a window seal joint really it's, it's a completely different sort of product and uh, this brake clean does a very good job of sort of getting it off it's a bit like a well it is a, probably a window seal into something a little strip of it and um, this brake clean does do a good job of getting that off actually brake clean is really quite good at getting rid of sticky things if you happen to need to get rid of them use it quite a lot well, this little bit here where the back chain the shape changes is a bit hard to get at with your fingers so you might find it's just a bit helpful to use a scrudelberg it give you a little bit extra pressure on it's only dirt but it and it doesn't interfere with where it's uh, sticking that bit's easy to clean but this bit here I'm just going to clean it so it doesn't encourage the rust and then just find a fresh piece of shop towel to dry it all off and again just take this little strip off but be careful not to, you can see actually I'll just show you unlike the the other bit this is uh, this is sort of a like a rubber sticky thing it's not a 3m thing really it's more like a rubber sealant completely different stuff and the whereas this bit here is definitely a 3m sticky pad you can see of, of a sort and remember fit the bottom bit first because that's the bit that needs to be in the right place be sure not to let this bit catch prematurely or else it'll be stuck where you don't want it to be stuck and then you can squeeze it down and it's as simple as that he says much improved and you can see mine started to go here as well look and I'll, I'll be doing the exact same thing to change mine but fortunately I only need the one this side's either been done or hasn't hasn't failed right and there we have it that's pretty much uh, it uh, this is the the box of fancy light bulbs and we have installed them all i'm not going to uh, i'm not going to do a video on how to do that because it's um well mostly because simon at powerful uk has already got a video on it uh i did have a look at it and it was pretty good but what i can tell you is that um if you're fitting those uh those capless bulbs into the the send the console lights above um the, the type that that simon sends out are a little bit bigger than the the capitalist bulbs that originally fit in there now there's a number of ways to go about resolving this problem on my vehicle i went and bought some extra ones from phillips um and you can find them i can't just remember the, the bulb name but they've got uh they're exactly the same size as the original capitalist bulb um 
but on on and Nicky's what I've done is I've drilled out the the, the plastic housing very carefully um, and that way the bulbs fit you're going to need a half inch drill uh, in order to fit the, the the bulbs that he sends out now you have to be very careful when you take those out because it's very fragile plastic and the whole difference the size difference isn't very big so the drill can tend to grab a bit so you have got you've got to, I find it better if you run the drill backwards to sort of score a kind of a shape in it so that it doesn't grab uh, in the whole shape and then uh, on the webs of the drill and then uh, and then drill slowly and that way it works also what I did was I should perhaps have shown you now saying that they're easy to fit <laughs> Uh, this is the uh, this is some padding that actually came in these boxes uh, for the rear door seals um, the rear window seals and what I did was I trapped the the console in this and shoved it in the vice to give me a stable fit uh, stable footing um, so that's what I'd suggest to do with that you can get uh, I have got it here uh, in that box you can get a set of plastic tools uh, trim tools for for pulling trim out and uh, I actually forgot that I got them and, and so I have managed to make a bit of a mark in the leather dashboard uh, underneath uh, with the put not the puddle lights but the actual sort of uh, footwell lights in the drivers and the passenger side and what I'm going to tell you to do now is they make a proper kit of uh, plastic trim tools and this is such a kit and one of them is slightly scalloped um, and allows you just nicely to get here we are into that round thing so if you can get a tool that's like this it's slightly scalloped and you can just poke it in the bit to remember and that i forgot is that those round puddle lights that show not puddle lights but those round lights that light up the footwell the the indents for them are horizontal not vertical and so when you're trying to get your tools in to sort of flick the lights out you need to go side by side not top and bottom side by side is the way to get those out um, and getting a kit like this again this was like 10 bucks off Amazon Amazon's your friend isn't it for this kind of thing anyway um, do use those and you'll not make the mistakes I did having known better and did it anyway um, the last thing I should tell you about the fitting of those weather strip seals for the back window is that this this affair which is connected to the the, the actual weather strip is designed to go underneath the back tailgate and I'm not entirely sure whether you're meant to slide it in and then try and pull this thing out that doesn't seem like it works but I suspect that this is designed to be installed with the um, maybe you put it in like that and slide it in and then pull it out there's probably a way to do it and Stephen's sad that he didn't experiment more having just thought about it it is possible he says walking closer to the camera if you were to slide this piece under the glass uh, with the with the slippy bit in place but leaving this tag out like this it would be possible to slide that under the glass and then pull revealing that revealing the sticky bit and I'm really sad that I didn't do that now because if I thought about it enough that would have been the fix um, and that would stop you having to replace the old glass but uh, as I've mentioned to you mine doesn't have them on at all uh, and they've been there for at least well I've had it a year and a half and have not fallen off yet so uh, I don't suspect it's a big issue and I don't think these were very many money I think the whole I think the box of bits was $248 and at least 200 of that was for filters so these two parts uh, which I don't think are many money um, uh, DED 500 190 and DED 500 180 obviously for the sides um, these are relatively easy fits and, and uh, relatively the biggest jobs cleaning that area up um, and uh, and having thought about it that would have been a better way to fit that bad Stephen um, and uh, we've fitted these lights which are a massive improvement I, I, these main beams I have changed like I've said I've also changed my he headlight bulbs to Osram Nightbreaker and there is probably a 25% increase in that these lights are significantly better than the ones on the new Defender I have mentioned there's even without the fancy bulbs in because they turn they're adaptive headlights and because they turn and, and, and move as you turn corners they're actually really good in the mountains the new Defender lighting is, is even though they're LEDs they're dreadful um, 
one of my biggest criticisms of it the the d5 was a significant improvement that had led headlights but it was also not not adaptive so they didn't turn the corners so while well, they were very good um this is actually the, the the better option is these adaptive headlights that do turn and then uh, the options are changing the bulbs which is is relatively easy um and that's that uh, thank you very much for tuning in please do like and sub subscribe he says flashing this thing across here which will be here when i edit it um do like and subscribe it's, it's it does help me uh, find out what videos you're interested in and, and I can tell by the types of videos that you like and comment on which are more popular and I try to do more of those um, and these are only short little videos on, on slight modifications but anyway I hope they've been of use to you um, and I guess we'll see you next time uh, take care of yourselves and, and cheerio